Hello, Old School Gamer 1971 here, greetings one and all, especially to you Millie and Lloyd. Today my third hour thoughts is on Shadow of the Tomb Raider. I've been playing this game for around 3 hours and this is what I think. Ok, Shadow of the Tomb Raider was made by Crystal Dynamics and Eidos. It's an adventure game, it came out for the PlayStation 4 in 2018. Ok, so this is the sequel to the excellent Rise of the Tomb Raider. Set a short time later, it was developed by Crystal Dynamics, who made Gex and Legacy of Cain, and Eidos, the original Tomb Raider franchise, Legacy of Cain and Thief. It is good to see Eidos back after so long. Crystal Dynamics developed the previous two entries alone. Eidos has been through several name changes over the years, Eidos Square Enix Europe and Eidos Montreal, but it is pretty much all the same team. Set shortly after the rise of the Tomb Raider, Lara is adventuring through Mesoamerica and South America to the ancient city of Paititi. Along the way you find your way into a temple. There are drawings upon the wall depicting the end of the world pretty much. Tsunami, storm, earthquake and volcano. There is also a dagger, the dagger of Kite Chell. Hopefully I didn't murder that too bad. That is the key to start it all. You pick it up and escape not wishing to leave it behind for your enemies to pick up. You find yourself in a flood on the street. Escaping to high ground you run into Trinita and they tell you how to save the world but take the dagger away from you. So you set out for the paramilitary organisation Trinity ahead of you. Time is running out for you to avert the Mayan apocalypse that Lara herself has set into motion. In itself it sounds like quite a story, hopefully a fitting end to Lara's origin story. So has this been Lara Tomb Raider raiding a tomb or Lara Time Team digging up a Roman privy? It opens to a plane crashing, Lara is making her way to the front of the plane, she wants to level the plane off. She moves the dead pilot out of the way, as she does so the plane starts to split apart. It splits into two and your guide Jonah and yourself are split up. You in the cockpit, Jonah in the back. Jonah falls out of sight plummeting to the earth. You settle into the seat and Lara is struggling with a seatbelt. With only a second or two spare, she clicks it into place, putting her arms up in defence before the impact. Then we go back a couple of days. Lara is trapped in a hole by a large stone, trapping her leg against the wall. This is a pretty good opening. It looks good and definitely a dramatic start. But it all seemed a little too similar to another game. More about that later. This certainly is a nice game to look at, whether it's night, day, underwater or in a forest, it all looks so fantastic. It is also quite detailed in the background. That being said, by now this is what I expect from a AAA title. It is also animated very well, smooth. They done a good job of motion capture with this game, but with the quality of titles this year, it's a little above average. I've really enjoyed and look forward to every gameplay section, however the cutscenes are the problem. So on to sound, ambient sound is good in this game, voice over good, the music is pretty good, however it does not a lot for the atmosphere of the game, and it has nothing to do with the sound, more to do with the writing, set pieces in particular. 
It is a pity, as it is obvious that time and effort was put into this game's sound. In fact, the game overall was put together with the same time and effort. There are some nice touches to this game. It even has echoes in enclosed areas. So overall the sound does its job. It's just a pity that other things work against it. Laura! You gotta get out. Combat, I like the bow. First combat in the game, I shot someone in the eye. To me, this is probably the one area where the Tomb Raider reboot has it so very right. However, something that really needs saying is the reboot gave her the best iconic weapon. Now don't get me wrong, twin pistols were good, but the bow is better. As well, the stealth works pretty good too. They actually look for you where you last were. To me, the bow is the better option. They do borrow from elsewhere, Horizon Zero Dawn, Crisis 3 and Metal Gear Solid. But it does enough to stand out from the other games. I never felt overpowered and always felt I had to have my wits about me to survive. Which to me makes the combat more than good enough. The controls are back from Rise of the Tomb Raider, as such they're tight and easy to use. This is a good thing, as then you have an idea of how to play and you can easily jump in and play if you've played the previous entries. On a side note, I do enjoy the controls, they're mapped out really well. They are intuitive and responsive. She's a nimble little minx isn't she? Not quite to the degree of the originals, but better than most. I am glad they rebooted Lara, as she has grown with the games. In the new games she has grown as a character and as a person, and in the old games she grew in boob size. You can also see where the game has been borrowing from Uncharted 4. The repel for example works really well. For anyone living under a rock say the last 30 years, you play as Lara Croft. One thing that does need saying. Lara has never looked better than this. Add to this the classic costumes, I found this nostalgic and a nice touch as a fan of Tomb Raider through the years. Side note, Lara is ultimately one of the top 5 gaming icons. Mario, Sonic, Lara, Crash and Spyro, and no I won't put them in order. As well there is Jonah Maeva, your sidekick, a local man who knows the lie of the land and helps you along the way. And there is also the cult leader, Dr. Pedro Dominguez, the antagonist to our little story. So we're finally on to it. This is the thing I believe breaks the game. I started the game and the first thing I see is a crashing plane and I'm thinking back to Uncharted 1. They had a swinging system repel Uncharted 4 underwater section on Charted 3 and 4. I'm not saying it's a carbon copy, but when you start thinking about something else other than what I am playing, then it shatters the atmosphere completely. Right now it's an 82 on Metacritic for the Xbox One, only a 76 on PlayStation 4. Now I get that imitation is the sincerest form of flattery, but when it detracts from the game you're playing, I believe there is not enough to identify itself as its own game. So am I interested after 3 hours? Yes and no. When I get round to the Tomb Raider games then yes, 
However, how I feel about it right now, I can only really say this. I know Tomb Raider copied Indiana Jones and Uncharted copied them both. However, by the time the second game released, it was all about the big set pieces. It had become the game's shtick. Ultimately, Lara lost her identity in this game. In my opinion, this game should have been tough climbing and jumping sections, many tombs with mythical beasts, predators and dinosaurs, with her boat and twin pistols in tow. However, instead, the pacing doesn't help this game. Fast paced cutscene, ordinary Tomb Raider bit, then repeat. However, I love the Tomb Raider bits, but the cutscenes feel like a knockoff Uncharted. Which might seem a little harsh, but it's also very true. As well, go and look at that storyline and plot. This should have been the very, very best Tomb Raider game ever bar none. And yet, it don't work. So unfortunately, it's time team looking for a Roman Privet. So that about wraps it up, I hope you all have a good day, if this has been helpful in any way, like, comment, share and subscribe, as it helps the channel grow and makes an old man happy. I post new videos every week, let me know what you think down below in the comments. Old School Gamer 1971 signing off.